This is the Kia e Nero. This car has won multiple awards, has earned plaudits from journalists and enthusiasts alike. But what I want to know is, is it worthy of all that praise? Let's take a look. Now, it might not be immediately obvious why this car has won so many awards. It's not exactly groundbreaking in the way it looks. It's an SUV after all. There's a few subtle and modest lines here or there just to try and make it a little bit more aggressive, but overall it's pretty inoffensive looking. There's some bluey, greeny, tealy, I don't know what color you call it, but just some some hints that this car might be electric on the front and on the back. There's also a lack of a grille, of course, so some people will like that, uh, others find it a bit odd, perhaps they're still getting used to the idea that it doesn't need that at the front of the car. Overall, I'd probably say I find it a little uninspiring, but as we'll get on to, that's not really the point of this car. The interior of the e-Nero seems to have had a lot more attention than the exterior, and that's basically just because it's a little bit more interesting. Now, I'd describe it as pleasant, and that's a common theme with this car, which we'll come back to a bit later. The e-Nero at the moment is only available in the first edition trim. That basically means there's, there's one car, one car to choose from, and uh, it's a highly specced version. So you've got all the gizmos and gadgets you could think of, it's, it's very comfortable stuff. In terms of driving position, well, it's an SUV, and whether you like them or not, a lot of people prefer the driving position that you get with a car like this, and I do too, I, I'm not ashamed to admit it. I'm not a fan of SUVs per se, but the driving position in this e-Nero is really nice. In this car, the driver gets electronic seat adjustment, which means you can find the sweet spot that's just right for you. And one thing I would like to single out is the lumbar support, which might sound like a really bizarre thing to pick on, but on long journeys, uh, a lot of people do struggle with their lower back. So to have that sort of support and adjustment in a car like this, I think is really, really nice. And you do get quite a lot of adjustment. In terms of the steering wheel, well, usual stuff, up and down, forward and back and there's quite a lot of movement there to get it just in the place you want it. In terms of other creature comforts, you get heated front seats for the driver and the passenger, and you also get a heated steering wheel, which I found particularly cozy in the last few days. Overall material quality in the e-Nero is good, so you've got quite a lot of soft plastics, leather steering wheel, nice glossy center console, although it will pick up fingerprints, leather seats, you got handy areas for storage. However, you will find that there are some scratchy plastics on this car, so there's some there, there's some here, and particularly cheap plastic down here. Normally, I wouldn't complain about that on a car of this type. It's, it's a family car, it's to be used, right? But this car starts at just under £33,000, and that is with the government grant as well. Now, I would like to review this car on merits alone, but I can't help but factor in that cost when I'm driving it. I should also point out that electric cars are cheaper overall to run. The electricity to charge them is cheaper than fueling a petrol car. They have fewer moving parts as well, so the repair costs are less in a lot of cases and they tend to break down less often as well. So just keep that in mind if you are on the lookout for a new vehicle. So, what else can we say about this interior? Well, the infotainment system is pretty damn good. It comes with Apple CarPlay and it comes with Android Auto, but I don't actually think you'll need to use it. The reason I say that is the Kia system itself is very good. It's fast, it's responsive, and it's very clear when you're using the screen. Initially, I was a little bit overwhelmed with the fact that there's the screen menu, the driver's menu in front of you, um, and buttons as well. So there's more than one way of accessing what you need. But 
truth be told, once you've got used to it, it's really simple. And I like having the option there. Sometimes when I'm driving, it's easier to press the button. Other times when I need to access something else, it's much easier to use the screen. If I had one gripe about the interior, other than the scratchy plastics, it would probably be that this driver's display in front of the wheel is bright like really bright and I'm sure it's fine in the day but at night I found it a bit distracting and I couldn't find for the life of me where I could change that in the system if you know how you can dim it then let me know in the comments below but personally I couldn't find it and I thought it was a bit too bright otherwise all the information you need is in front of you and it was really really helpful to have now in terms of practicality you can't really go wrong with the E Nero. Now I'm not a particularly tall chap, but I've got plenty of headroom here. And this roof line doesn't really slope that much. So I think even if you're over six foot, you'll probably be okay. In terms of feet space, well, I've got plenty of room here and I've left the driver's seat in the position I would be driving at, which admittedly means I've got quite a lot of room here. Uh, under the seat, well, there's space for me to stretch out a little bit more um, put my feet under that seat. I would like to see a bit more space for them, but you know, I'm nitpicking there. The other thing I've noticed is the space here is not fully flat. And that is one thing I do like to see in an electric car and is one benefit of them. Um, but I think because the E Nero shares the same platform as the petrol versions, that's probably why you have that tunnel there. In terms of what else you get in the car in the back, well, you've got an armrest, you've got two cup holders as well in case uh, your children are now drinking lattes too, or maybe fruit shoes, that's probably more appropriate. And uh, then you've also got space for more drinks here, um, electric windows in the back, and there's also space for, what goes in there? Coloring books? Anyway, overall, it's really pleasant in the back. I, I like it, there's plenty of space. So well done Kia. Outback boot space is generous, but it, it's not exactly earth shattering. You get 451 liters of boot space, which unusually for an electric car is more than the petrol and hybrid versions of the Nero. So that's really nice to see. You can see some of my uh, filming rubbish in here, including this rather delightful de-icing tool uh, not supplied by Kia uh, <laughs> but out back you've also got a compartment to stow away the charging cables now one thing I have thought about is if you're on a long trip or a long drive or you're planning a family trip and you're busy putting the kids in the car and putting the luggage into the boot you might forget where the cables are actually stored now, not a problem if the, they're easily accessible, like they are now, but if your boot is full of stuff, then not so easy to get at. So just bear that in mind. The seats also fold down. It's a 60-40 configuration, which not everyone really likes, but it does give you a lot of space. It nearly folds flat, not quite, but there's only a small lip here, so loading the car shouldn't be an issue. In fact, you can see very easy to load shopping. Yeah, that didn't go quite how I planned, but hopefully you get the idea that it's a decent boot size. Uh, I don't have any complaints here at all. So what's this car like to drive? Well, I'm gonna use that word again, and I'm gonna say it's pleasant. Surprisingly so, but pleasant. I don't know what else I would ask of this car, to be perfectly honest. I'm not expecting it to be a driver's car. It's smooth, it handles well. Despite the weight of the battery, it doesn't really lurch round corners. It handles really nicely. Yes, the suspension could be a little bit smoother, but it's not really a big complaint of mine. I've been really happy with it. And of course, what you get from all electric cars is that instant response from the electric motor, particularly when you put this one into sport mode. And it, it just flies. 
and puts a smile on your face is good fun. It's great fun. I would say that the front wheel drive sometimes struggles to put that power down. And I've had a couple of hair raising moments in the wet and, and I haven't been doing anything silly either. So just keep that in mind. But you know, at the traffic light drag race, as people call it, you will always win unless it's against another electric car. Not to 60 takes 7.5 seconds, which is not too shabby in a car of this size and weight. And don't forget, it's not designed to be super fast. But when you're driving around town and you're not going to track days or anything like that, then all the fun you're gonna have is in the naught to 30 mile an hour zone. And that's where a car like this really excels. And one feature that people on forums have been asking me to look at is the adaptive cruise control. Now, if you're familiar with normal cruise control, then this is just the next step up. Basically, what it will do is it will use radar and other sensors to detect the cars around it and in front, and it will maintain a distance between you and the vehicle in front. What this Kia will also do though, is assist you in steering. So it's not full self-drive or anything like that, but it will just ease you around a corner. If you're on a dual carriageway or a motorway or something like that, then it will also just navigate you around those smooth bends. One thing I would say about the adaptive cruise control is it can be a little bit jumpy. Uh, I noticed in some traffic just yesterday, actually, that it applies the brakes and then applies them again. And, and when you're coming to a stop, it, it's quite sudden. Uh, and the same when you're lifting off as well, it, it, it feels a bit jolty. You know, you're sort of in this motion. Now, I know one question that will be on everyone's lips, or some people's anyway, is what about the range? Well, you get about 230, 250 miles in the real world, I would say. I, I would say I'm a fairly typical driver and it just hasn't been a problem for me at all. I do about 15, 20 miles a day and obviously I'm not gonna need 300 miles. So I drive to work, I go home, I top the battery up a bit. I go to work, I go home and I top the battery up a bit. Rinse, repeat. It's really easy and I haven't had to spend any time refueling my car because it's always happening when I'm doing something else, such as being asleep. Kia reckons you'll get about 382 miles of sick driving. Now, I do understand why they say that, because when I've been pooling around town, I do recoup quite a lot of energy from the regenerative braking, probably a few miles even. So I, I, I completely get why they say that. However, if you're driving in the city, would you pick a car of this size? I don't know, I think I'd probably be likely to go for something more like a Renault Zoe. In terms of normal driving, well, I'm getting about probably 230 to 250 miles range per charge, and that's pretty much what I would expect from most drivers. Now, if you ever needed proof that an electric car can go through a car wash, then here it is. I'll make it out the other side. So at low speeds, the Kia is extremely quiet and that's to be expected of an electric car. There's no engine to make a noise. At higher speeds, you are going to notice more wind noise and more road noise. And it's hard to say whether that's because of poor sound insulation or just because there isn't a petrol engine to mask that noise. Just like a lot of other electric cars, the e-Nero has regenerative braking. Now, if you're not familiar with what that is, effectively, the car uses the electric motors to slow down. And this is a bit like engine braking. All that happens is the electric motors kind of go into reverse and they recoup some of that kinetic energy, some of that moving energy back into the battery. And there have been occasions where I've managed to recoup half a mile 
just using the regenerative braking system. It's surprisingly effective. There are three main levels of regen in this car. So you can basically have it at its lowest setting where it will gradually slow the car down, but it's not that noticeable. Then you've got a setting above that, which is noticeable, makes a difference, but the car won't come to a stop on its own. And then you've got the harshest of all the regen tiers, uh, and that will that will almost bring the car to a stop and it and it is quite harsh actually so i think some people won't like it i like using the regen systems so i do have it on that top setting um, but i know other people who aren't so keen on it you can also obviously have it completely off and just drive it like you do a petrol car and just coast if you prefer i really like this car and while it might not be my first choice I would happily have it as a second, more practical, more reliable family car. It's really nice and I'll be sad to see it go back. This then is a very capable car. The e-Nero, it looks decent, has plenty of space out back for the kids or your stuff. All the gadgets you could want inside, plus when you put your foot down it puts a massive smile on your face. It's a brilliant car, but that price, it is a sticking point for me. At just shy of 33 grand, with the government grant anyway, I would at least expect those scratchy plastics to be, well, not scratchy. It depends what you're after ultimately. If you want a supreme driving experience with the utmost luxury, this probably isn't for you, but it's not designed for that either. If you want a good, family size electric car with decent range and plenty of features inside i don't think you could go wrong with this for more information on electric cars electric car chargers and installation go to smarthomecharger.co.uk and if you want more content like this click subscribe down below now i'm going to warm up mm -hmm.